In this video, I'm going to show how to present data that's changing over time. I'm going to show how to present it dynamically. And I think that it gives the user a little bit better insight into how the data changes, or maybe it's a better visual, as opposed to just showing that type of data uh, using a static chart. Uh, the data I'm going to be using is flow data from the Buffalo River at St. Joe, and I, I wanted to show you where that is. So this is the Buffalo River right here. This is uh, right around St. Joe, Arkansas. And if we go downstream on the Buffalo River, we can see that it enters the White River. So it's a tributary of the White River, and it enters the White River around Buffalo City, Arkansas. Give you a little bit more perspective. We'll zoom out a little bit more. Remember, this is the Buffalo River entering the White River. And it's going to be downstream of Bull Shoals on the White River but it's going to come in upstream of the North Fork River, which again is another tributary to the White River. Uh, and on that, it has North Fork Dam. So the Buffalo River actually enters the White River in between two major reservoirs with Bull Shores being upstream, North Fork being downstream. So what I did is I got the data from the USGS or the US Geological Survey, and I got mean daily flow data and I got that for 1940 through 2020. And so if you want to see how something changes over time, you can obviously uh, plot each one of the flows, but you can also do like a running average. So you, um, what I'm doing is a, a running average. So for, uh, for instance, for 1941, I take the average of 1940 and 1941. For 1942, I take the average from 1940 through 1942 and so on. Now you may also want to look at uh, averages on a shorter time scale. And, and in this case, we're going to be doing a moving three-year average. So for 1942, I'm taking the average from 1940 to 1942. For 1943, I'm taking the average from 1941 to 1943. So in each one of these cases, I'm doing this uh, moving three-year average. So I'm uh, looking at a long-term average, a long-term running average, and also I'm looking on a shorter-term moving three-year average. And then I plot those in this plot. For the mean daily flow values, I show them using a bar chart, and those are the blue bars. And I have this mixing of a bar chart and a line chart. I don't go in to show how to do that in this video, but I can do another video to show how that's done. The green line is the... Uh, long-term running average. And one thing to notice about it is that by the time you get to the late 1960s, it appears that it has settled on this long-term average, and then it doesn't change a whole lot for the next 50 years. So that's something that is, is helpful to show when you're looking at this long-term data. But you may also want to know how variable is it over a short-term period, and that's where a moving three-year average can help. And I show that using the the red dash line. And you can see that it is variable over, if you look at these, these moving three-year averages. So again, this is something that can be really helpful to show in a uh, uh, dynamically in a plot as opposed to just showing a static plot, which is what you have here. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a uh, copy of this. I just hit Control C. And I'm going to take this out and then restart. So I take my plot and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, an animation on the plot. I'm going to call it a wipe. And you can see that it came in from bottom to top and we really don't want that. We want this to come in from left to right. So what I wanted to do is to come in from the left and that's a lot better. And I also want it to come in by series. Now, the one thing that you may have noticed is that, the, and you can look over here in the animation pane, that it come, uh, one of the, the features is that the background comes in. I really don't need the background to, to wipe in from left to right. So what I'm going to do, so you can see that you have the background, you have series one, series two, and series three but I really don't need the background coming in. So I'm going to remove that. 
So now I just have series one, series two, and series three. I can play that. Yeah, not exactly what we wanted because now we have each one of these coming in separately. So what I wanted to do is to start with previous on all three of these. I go back up to the top and I play it from the beginning. Now they all come in together probably a little bit fast for showing that data. So I can do timing. And what I can do is slow. And one thing to notice is that these, uh, this green bar is longer now for series one. And it just means that the timing that uh, it takes for series one is going to take longer than series two and series three, but we really don't want that. We want them to all be the same. So I'm going to call that one slow. And then for series three, I'm going to call that one slow. And then if we have this come in from the beginning, and you can see you have a nice chart where all three of the series are coming in at the same time. I have another chart here that I use just to show the growth of, of money over time based on if you put a certain amount in each year and then uh, based on a certain interest rate. And these are nice to show over time. So you can see that it shows the growth. And one thing that's nice is that it shows this growth at the end where it's growing by 200,000 uh, over four years at the end, but it took roughly, was that 19, 20 years at the beginning to grow by 200,000. So again, it, this is a nice way to show something dynamically that's changing over time. So hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If you wanna know when more of these videos are coming out, feel free to subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching this one.